welcome back to Victorian Charm Antiques. In order to understand what or who is haunting Victorian Charm, I have to take you, that's good, right back to the beginning. So have a seat. It's the Ukraine, late 1800s, the end of October. A strong wind blew over the field, heavy with the promise of early winter. The lantern swayed and flickered as the mother stood and closed the heavy windows. The fire crackled in the hearth and its warm orange, orange light reflected in a small mirror across the room. The mother took the lantern and moved through the house, checking on the two young boys sleeping in their room. She circled the house twice more, each time pausing in the front door, checking to see if there's any sign of her husband. He should have returned hours before. As the forest is nearly impossible to navigate once the sun has vanished, the mother sighed, her breath formed a white cloud in front of her. This wasn't the first time her husband had failed to return home. On those nights, he would build a camp in the forest and return the following day. The mother checked once more before sliding the lock into place and retreating to her room to sleep. A loud hollering awoke the family the next morning. A pair of boys were in tears within the town square, screaming and hollering about the beast in the forest. Unable to understand the boys, the group of men followed their point into the woods and came upon a gruesome scene just inside the tree line. Blood coated the trees. Streams of scarlet raced down the branches and dripped into a thin layer of frost that covered the forest floor. In the center, five bodies laid in the dirt. Their throats were gaping holes. An investigation ensued immediately and it was found that the five hunters had been attacked by some sort of beast in the woods just before they reached the safety of town. The only question that remained was, what attacked the group? Hunters gathered to examine the bodies. Nearly all of them agreed that spare for wolves, no other creature would rip out a throat that way. The wolves are rare in this neck of the woods. They also agreed that the beast had to be fairly large to deal with the wound, something human size at least. The small town avoided the forest for some time, but food had to be gathered and hunted. So hunters returned to the worn paths. The reports of strange occurrences started to emerge, shadows following the hunting groups through the forest, people appearing and vanishing in the distance, dead animals in the woods had the same gaping neck wounds as the five dead hunters. No more hunters were attacked until the following winter. Two hunters vanished from the forest. A group went out to track them, but their footsteps disappeared in the drifting snow, and the team returned to town empty-handed. The entire village was on edge. Windows locked all the time, people refusing to walk alone, even in the daylight. All the stories around the hearse were plagued with the fear of deadly shadows and sharp teeth hunting the entire town. Children refused to sleep without candles lit in their rooms, and once again, a law followed the missing hunters for the following year. By the time the first frost hit, the town had grown tired of being trapped in fear. The remaining hunters, wives, and mothers gathered to discuss the attacks. They spoke until the fires grew low and the dawn began to spread across the sky. By the time the group dispersed, the hunters knew what to do when the creature had returned. The hunters returned to the forest. Once again, hunters failed to return to their homes the following night. The next meeting only contained the wives and the mothers. The group looked at each other and decided that whatever the creature was, it wasn't an animal their husbands and sons were used to hunting. It was something far more dangerous. A new plan emerged. Did you hear that? What was it? I don't know. Hmm. I just heard a bang. I don't know what it was. No, well, let's carry on. Okay. I mean, what could it be, right? <laughs> Check <In> this house. <laughs> a new plan emerged. The next night, only one person entered the forest while her sons lay asleep in the beds. In her hands, a mirror crafted by her father and her mother's bag swung against her hip. The mother settled into the clearing and she opened the bag and spread the contents around the mirror. She lit six candles in a circle. The dancing flames reflected in the old mirror, which threw the light far into the forest far enough that the creature could see it. Most animals would run from the fire, but this was not an animal. Within seconds, a woman spotted a shadow creeping through the trees out of the corner of her eye. She didn't move as it grew closer and closer. Instead, she focused on her trapping spell her grandmother taught her mother and her mother had taught her. One that trapped evil spirits within mirrors. The woman laid the mirror down on its back and picked up a candle, tilting the wax so it dripped onto the reflective surface. She watched the shadow grow closer and set the candle down. Her hands trembled as she picked up a bag of sage, lavender, and rosemary. She sprinkled the herbs over the still cooling wax and bowed her head. Finally, the shadow reached the clearing. The woman raised her head and met the dark gaze of the de demonic creature. 
Blood coated its lips and the pale white fangs glinted in the firelight. Its skin was pale as a corpse and it was stretched over its bones like old leather. The woman bolted to her feet and backed away. The creature ran after her, crossing the clearing and stepping on the mirror. Then it stumbled. The mirror shifted, clinging to the creature's foot like a shoe. Then the mirror slowly began pulling the creature inside. Howls filled the night air, waking children and adults alike. They remained in their beds, clinging to each other as the screams echoed through the town. For many, the screeching would haunt their dreams and their waking moments for the rest of their lives. When dawn broke, the old the woman returned and old... Did you hear that again? There is something. We'll check it out later. <laughs> Told you I don't like that mural. I don't like that mirror. I know. When the dawn broke, a woman returned, an old, slightly damaged mirror clasped in her hands, and from that day on, all hunters that ventured into the forest returned home to their families when they intended to. The woman and her two sons left the town, a mirror tucked deep in her bags. They immigrated to a new land overseas. Halfway through the voyage, the woman dug out the mirror and glanced it over. Her eyes lingered on the discolored corner, and then she threw it overboard and watched it sink below the blue ocean. The family moved into a new house in another small town in Ontario. As they walked through the door, the mother's heart sunk. Her eyes landed on an all too familiar mirror with a discolored corner. She swallowed hard but made no comment to her sons. The secret of the mirror and the creature would die with her, she vowed. To be safe, she wrote a tale on a piece of paper and hid it between the mirror and its backing. Mm hmm. In case the future held a way of completely killing the creature that stole the lives of so many, until then the beast remains trapped within the mirror, trapped and waiting for its freedom. Until then it would cause what little trouble it could, knocking over objects. A pale face would appear in the reflection without warning. Slowly the mirror wears away, and slowly the creature's reach grows. One day at noon, it was steep. And there you have the story of Victorian Charm. Happy Halloween! <laughs>